Okay, so I'm going to show you a limiting react reactant problem. Uh, and this is where we have a certain reagents or reactants we start with on one side, and we determine by how much we have of each of these reactants or reagents, how much of the product can we produce. And here, this is a problem from the form that I gave you, but it says a 2 gram sample of ammonia is mixed with the 4 grams of oxygen gas, which would be O2, and it produces nitrogen monoxide, or NO, and water, H2O. So it says which, which reagent is the limiting reactant for producing NO or nitrogen monoxide? And we could just do it for both, but we'll just do it for nitrogen monoxide. It'll give you the gist of how to do it. So the first thing you always want to do is you take these words and you put it into an actual equation. Okay. And so then and the next thing we do after that, so here we, but here we go, nitrogen. We have ammonia, we have oxygen gas, nitrogen monoxide, and then H2O water. So then we have to balance it, right? And we're going to see two here, three here. So the thing we might see, though, if we put a three and a two here, we get that balance, right? Two times three is six. Three times two is six. You might see a potential problem. Maybe you don't notice it right away. But we'll go to the next thing, two nitrogen, two nitrogen. And then uh, we have five or three and five, so we're never going to get that. So we could put though 2.5, okay, if we did that, right, so that would give us five, and then we just have to multiply by two to get everything right. We'd have four, we'd have five, we'd have four, and then we'd have six, okay, and then we just come back and check. Four times three is 12, six times two is 12, we, ha we then have 4 nitrogen, 4 nitrogen, we then have 10 oxygen, we have 4, and 6 is 10. It's perfect. So now it's balanced. And this helps us with the mole ratio. So we have, if we have 4 of these, we have 4 moles of ammonia to 5 moles of oxygen, or 4 moles of ammonia to 4 moles of nitrogen monoxide. And this is the one we're worried about right here. So this is the one we want to figure out, the limiter from this ammonia or oxygen. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the equation. So we bring our, write our numbers in down here. So 2.00 grams of NH3. Okay, then we're going to go down. We're going to put the next one. 4 grams of O2. So then we just got to figure out what do we need to multiply by to get these to uh, the mole ratio of the compared to the other mole number of moles and then let me just put lines under these we'll get started <clears throat> so then if I wanted to I could just go here and I could put a one right because it's not a two a one and then here same thing and get rid of that and then we put a one okay so then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply through here and we're going to add uh, ratios that we can use. The first ratio we want to do is the one we learned first is converting grams to moles because we're going to convert these grams, both of them, into moles and then we're going to use the moles in this equation to convert back to grams of the other substance. Because the one thing we know, and this is the law of conservation of matter, that we have four moles of ammonia to four moles of nitrogen monoxide. So it's a one-to-one -one, really. But let's, let me show you how we do it. So then what we do is we put, we're going to times it. And we're going to times it by uh, how many grams of something over moles. And grams is going to be on the bottom, so we're going to draw this in. Let me do it first. NH is one mole NH three. So then we just need to figure out, well, how many grams is that, right? Because what we're going to do is we take the grams and convert into moles. But so we have NH3. So we have 14, and then three of these nitro or hydrogens. So that gives us 17.01. So we can just write that in. Okay, so there's our multi there's our conversion there, and then so now we have moles of NH3. Now we just need to put in the uh, conversion factor. 
and let's do that. So now we know there are four to four, right? Let's just write it in though. So four moles of NO. We're going to put this one on the top because the other one, the NH3 has to be on the bottom because we want to cross it out. So we're doing this, okay. Then we're going to go down here. And it's the same, right? So it's four moles. I'm going to fix that in a minute. In H3. I got this ridiculous thing here. I got to fix it all over again now. It won't take me that long. This and that. Okay. So now look. What I did was, check this out. I started with grams of NH3. And I then use this conversion factor and I can cross out grams of NH3 because they're across from each other. And now I have moles of NH3. But then I just take the equation and I use the mole ratio because this is something we can count on. There's four moles of this ammonia to four moles of nitrogen monoxide. So I put that in the equation. So now if I went look and can't see what I canceled, I'm now down to moles of NO. And we could just solve for that. We could just say, well, how many moles of NO do I have? And then once I know which one's the limiter, I can then multiply and see how many grams I have. I could do it that way. But we're going to do a little bit different. So we're going to go like this. So then the next thing, the next thing we need to do is then convert it to grams. So how many grams of this NO are we going to produce? Well, now we know how many moles. So if we just go uh, grams of NO. We can figure out, really, and we're going to do moles, right? So we just go nitrogen is 14, oxygen is 16, so we got 30.1 grams of this, right? Let me put a line under it. Then we come over here, get rid of this, and that's one mole. Right. So now if you look, what I've done is I've converted the grams of this into the grams of this. And if I if I went and took my pencil, right, and I just went grams of NH3, right, and then moles of NH3, you have to make sure these are all lined up correctly. They have to be across from each other so we can cross them out. And then we have moles of NO to moles of NO. The unit we're left with is grams of nitrogen monoxide. And that's what we want to figure out. If I have this, this two grams of this, how many do I have of this? Then you just do the math. Okay. So if I got my calculator out and I did the math and I said two and I said times. Don't worry about the four actually because look, they cancel. Four on top from the bottom and I'm going to worry about it. Just don't do them. So two times 30.1. And then we're going to divide by, uh, 17.01. That's going to give us 3.54. That's how many grams. So we could even write it. 3.54. So that's why, so if I have two grams of this, I can produce this much. 3.54. So the next one to do, I then have to compare it. Actually, let's go back. So then I have to compare it to this four grams of oxygen. So I have this much ammonia, I can produce this much nitrogen monoxide. So my next thing is to do the same thing I just did and see how much, well, if I have this much oxygen, how much can I produce of NO? Do the same thing, one mole of O2, right? We could probably just copy this, make it easier. Right? And then we just do the line under it. And then here, remember how much it is? So it's 16 times two, because there's two of them, so 32 grams of O2, right? So that's our conversion there, right? So now we're to moles, same thing. Okay. We're now going to compare the mole ratio. Oh, come on now. I'm just going to have to do this. No line either, come on. OK. 
him. So then we're going to do the mole ratio, and O2 has to be on the bottom, so our NO is going to have to be on the top. We can even copy this one up here, right? Because we know it's going to be 4. Then we have 5 moles of oxygen, right? So we put that in. Okay, so now we're down to moles. So we could right now tell ourselves, if we just did the calculations, we could tell ourselves how many moles of nitrog nitrogen monoxide we have. Okay, so if we were just doing a limiting reagent problem, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to convert this last part here, and we're going to con convert it into uh, from moles of uh, NO into grams of NO. So then if we take this back in here, and this is going to be one mole of NO. And that's going to be, wait, wrong way, it's in the bottom. Okay, so and the reason we did this, if I show you again, we want to cancel. So we had grams of O2, they need to be across from each other, right? And then we can do moles of O2, right? Here and here, they have to be across. And then we can have moles of NO, and we end up with the unit we want, grams of NO. So then if we just do the math, we'll pause. So do the math, get our calculator out, and we go 4 times 4 times 30. It's actually 30.1. I'll add that in a minute. So 481.6, let's put this down here. We go back to that, 41.6, and we're going to divide by these. Divide by 32, and then divide by 5. That gives us 3.01. Okay, so we compare, we have 3.54 here, pretty close actually, you know, less than a, about a half a gram less, but then the O2 is the limiting reagent. We know it's going to produce less. Okay, so then the next question is, how much uh, of the ammonia will we need to, or how much will, in all, or really how much will we have in excess? So we know we're going to produce 3.01 grams of NO. We know we have um, 2 grams of ammonia. Then we have to ask ourselves, well, how much can I, how much of that will I use? And if that's how much I use, how much will be left over? Because that's a common question in these types of problems. So then we just do some of the math again that we did on top, right? So we have 3.1 grams of, this is how much we're going to, we're going to 3.101, right? Let's change that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did here. We start with grams. We're going to use this mole conversion. So we're going to have one mole of NO. And then we remember from the top, one mole of NO. It's equal to 30.1, right? Okay. And then we're going to do the, con the mole conversion, which is going to be how many moles of NO to how many moles of NH3. So we'll do that. Okay, so to, to do that, we have one mole of NH3 on the bottom. We just have to compare from our equation we started with. And actually, we have four, right? So four. And then we ended up with how many moles of NO4, right? So we could have put one to one in there, but we'll just do four. And you can always check yourself as you're going through the problem. Do these are these crossing as we go? Grams of NO, grams of NO, right? They're crossed. Moles of NO, moles of NO, 
they're crossing, right? So the last thing we need to do then is to uh, put in how many grams of NH3. Just move this one over here. And if you remember, we looked at it, it was 17.01. Move that back. Okay. So now we can figure out. We know we started off with 2, right? So it's going to be less than that. Hopefully, when we do our calculation, right, or we know we did something wrong. Shouldn't have. And then, so we just do the math 3.01 times 4 times 17.01 gives us that and we're going to divide by 30 then divide by 4 1.71 so we're going to end up with okay and then Remember, we start off with 2, so this is how much we would actually use. And then our excess would be whatever the 2 2 minus 1.70, we get our calculator back. Point seven one two minus one point seven one point two nine so zero point two nine grams in H three excess and that means it's not used. So if we really wanted to do this reaction, we could just uh, use one point seven one grams. Okay. So then the final problem would be, and I'm not going to do one here, but I'll do one and share it with you later on tonight or maybe tomorrow is uh, percent yield because when we when we look at this first one here this let me erase this quickly but if we look at this first one here this 3.01 grams of NO that's the limiter so oxygen's the limiter it says we can produce 3.01 but that's theoretical if everything works together right we'll produce exactly that if we have uh, 4 grams of oxygen and 1.71 grams of nitrogen will produce this of NO that's if everything works perfectly, it rarely ever does. But if it if it didn't, we'd probably get a number like this. I'll just show you now, I guess. So it says if we produce fix this. So if we produce two point eight five grams of NO what is the percent yield? Okay. Percent yield is just really the idea of what were we supposed to get, what did we get out of it, and this equals percent divided by, or sorry, it equals actual divided by theoretical. times 100 because it's a percent. So if we look at this, the actual, it's equal to, if we did produce 2.85, we divide it by 3.01, which is the theoretical, and then we multiply that by 100. And if we get our calculator out, we can do that. We can say 2.85 divided by 3.01 and we times that by 100 and we get 94.7 percent yield. We'll just put that over here. 94.7 So we were supposed to produce 3.01 
but we really produced 94% of that and so we call that 94% yield. Let's see if I get this to move up here. Yeah, right there. Okay. So this kind of shows you all the different parts of these kind of problems. It shows you how do you figure out which one's the limiter. Then if you know the limiter, you know the excess reagent or reactant. Then you can take what you figured out, the theoretical yield, and figure out how much of the excess you will need. Then if you then know, know how much of the excess you need, you can figure out how much is left over. But also you can figure out if you knew what was the actual amount produced, you could figure out percent yield by comparing it to what the theoretical was, what you should produce, compared to what you actually produced, and times that by 100 and gives you percent. Okay, So this should show you how to do these problems. I hope this helps you. Make sure you practice this. So you want to look these over, uh, watch the video, maybe do it as I'm doing it, do it with me, and then uh, then try it on your own as well. There's nothing, nothing wrong with practicing something a couple times. Uh, you do it in volleyball, basketball, that kind of stuff. So you should be doing it in science and math as well. So let me know if you have any questions. Try this out.